Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to design this US Space Force logo. I decided to design this logo after Trump announced that he was going to create a Space Force. And this is a completely fictional logo but it's based off of the United States Air Force logo. And I used some of the colors from the American flag and the United States Air Force uh, to come up with the colors for this logo. And as you can see the logo has sort of a vector look to it. And there's a lot of cool techniques that I do to uh, create this final result that we're going to go through in this tutorial. Before we dive into the tutorial, of course, I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, we've got tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as our poll of the week and project translate, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And you can visit our new official Davies Media Design merch page. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here's the font I'm using. This is called Amarillo USAF, which stands for United States Air Force, of course. And uh, this is just a similar font to what they use for the Air Force logo. And I thought that was appropriate since the Space Force was kind of born out of the Air Force. And then I used this star shape, which I just Googled star shape, and uh, I thought this was the best one. I Googled NASA space rockets, and this is one of the results that popped up. So go ahead and download this image, and of course I'll include all of these links in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to create a new composition, so I'll go to File, New. And I started with this at 1900 by 1900. I just started with it fairly large because uh, with GIMP being a raster-based program, it's kind of hard to scale up a logo and not lose quality, so I just wanted to start with this at a pretty large size. And I'll come down here to Advanced Options. Make sure your resolution is set to 300 by 300 for the X and Y, and that's just because that's better for print. So if you plan on printing this logo at any point, you're going to want to have a version of this that is uh, a high resolution 300 by 300. You can also change the precision to something higher. Uh, you've got a bunch of options here. I'm going to go with 16-bit uh, just so this image isn't too huge to start with. And so here's our new composition. It used my background color I have selected here, which was this blue color. I'm just going to change this to white for now, and uh, we're going to work on that background color in a little bit. All right, so once you've done that, go ahead and open up the photo of the Orbital X34. And you can do that by going to File Open and searching for the download on your computer. And what I want to do is take the shape of this rocket here, because we're going to use it as the main rocket shape in our logo. And we want to sort of vectorize it. Again, this is a raster-based program, so it's not actually vector. It just kind of has that vector look to it. So the easiest way to do that in this photo, because we do have a pretty solid separation between the background and this foreground object, is we're going to go ahead and use the foreground select tool. So we'll go ahead and use our lasso tool here. You'll notice the mouse pointer right now is uh, shaped like the lasso tool usually is. And I'm going to loosely outline the foreground object here. And I'll connect the endpoints and hit the enter key. And for the next part, I'm going to make sure that the draw mode is set to draw foreground. And I'm going to go ahead and use my paintbrush here. You'll see my mouse pointer change now to the paintbrush tool. And I'm just going to loosely select every uh, part of the foreground object here, which is our uh, rocket ship, our spaceship. And then I'll just fill in the gaps here. And I'll hit the enter key. And now you can see our foreground object has been separated from the background. And I'll just hit enter again. And now you'll see we have a selection area outlining our rocket ship. The main issue here is that there are some holes in our selection area. You can see uh, there's just some marching ants just within the shape here. And that's not something we want. So all we have to do is go to select, remove holes. And now the holes within our selection area have been removed, and this will make this uh, shape a little bit smoother. Now the next thing I want to do is create a path from this. And so to do that, I'll go to Select, To Path, and that will go ahead and add this shape as a path, the selection shape that we have here. So if I come over here to my paths, you'll see now we have our selection area in the shape of a rocket ship as a path. And I'll just go ahead and name the spaceship and so what I want to do now is bring that path into our composition. So I'll right click and go to copy path. And then I'll come over here to our composition and make sure we're in our path dialog. And by the way, if you don't see the path dialog here, you can go to windows, dockable dialogs and choose paths. And so we're in our path dialog here and I can right click and go to paste path. And now we have our spaceship path here. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and move this more towards the center of our composition. And so to do that, I'll grab my pass tool. I'll make sure that the edit mode is set to move and then I'll click on our path here and uh, that actually might change this again. So uh, change this back to move and then go ahead and move this path a little bit closer to the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. We're going to adjust this in a second. But now I'll come over here to my layers dialog and create a new layer. And I'm going to name this spaceship and click OK. And you do want to make sure this has a transparent background. You can uh, set the fill width to transparency to do that. And now I want to fill this path in with our blue color that we used in the original logo design here. And I got this blue color from, this is actually the hex colors for the American flag. So you can see we've got the pound symbol or the hashtag symbol 002868. That's the hex code for the blue used in the American flag. So I took that blue and I went ahead and pasted it here as my foreground color and click OK. And now I'll go ahead over here and choose fill path. And under choose fill style, choose the solid color option here. Make sure anti-aliasing is checked because that's going to smooth the edges. And then go ahead and hit fill. And we can come over here to our pass dialog and hide that path there, that spaceship path, and then grab another tool. And now you can see our spaceship outline here. So we'll come back to our layers panel. And now I want to go ahead and center this up and I need to flip it as well. So I'll start with the rotate tool. So I'll go ahead and grab the rotate tool, click on our layer here, and we can go ahead and rotate this until it says uh, negative 90 degrees here. And I can change the angle here manually just so it's more exact and hit rotate. And now I want to crop the layer to the content here. So I'll go to layer, crop to content, and that'll bring the layer size down. And this is going to help us go ahead and align this to the center. So I'll grab my alignment tool, click on our object here, and go ahead and hit align relative to uh, center of target, and then align relative to middle of target. And I have this set to first item. You can also set this to image and it'll work as well. So now we have our spaceship here. The next thing I want to do is bring in some guides so that I can center everything in our composition. And uh, so I'm going to bring in a vertical and a horizontal guide here. And I'm going to make sure I still have my alignment tool clicked. And you can align these guides. So I'll just click on this guide here and align relative to image and click the center button here. And then I'm going to come over here to our other guide. Make sure this guide is selected and then click align middle of target. And so now we have these guides aligned uh, perfectly on our composition. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is bring in our star shape here. So we've got two options here. We can either use the foreground select tool like we did before, or a quicker option since this is just one solid black color and this is white, is we can just grab our select by color tool and click on our star here, and that'll select everything that is black. And now I can go to select to path, and that'll create a path from the selection. So if I come over here to my path dialog, you can see we've got a star shape path now. And I'll go ahead and right click and go to copy path. And then come over here to our composition, right click and go to paste path. And then I can unhide that path and we can see we've got our star shape now. And I'll grab our path tool again, click on this path and change the mode to move. And then I'll just go ahead and move this down here to where I want it. And so. Let me grab my zoom tool actually and zoom in here. Grab my pass tool again, click on here, and then change this to move. So I got kind of lucky with this because the star is actually the size I want it to be. But if you guys uh, for some reason have the star too large or too small, you can actually use the scale tool or the unify transform tool and you can adjust the size of this path. And you just have to make sure you have the transform settings set to path and that will allow you to transform whatever the active path is, which in this case is our star. So I'm gonna exit out of that because I don't need to adjust this, but that's just a little tip for you guys. So I'll come back over here to our uh, path tool, click on this path again. I don't want this to be a star shape, I want it to be the arrow shape. So what I'm gonna do is click on these little nodes here and just hit my backspace key, and that is going to delete all of these nodes that we don't need. And I'm just going to do that on the other side as well. But you'll see after we do that that all of these connect. And I actually am going to delete this path here as well. So these automatically connect after we delete those and it creates a cool arrow shape here. So now I'm going to come back over to our layers panel. 
And I'm going to click on the selection from path and that's going to create a selection in the shape of our arrow here. And then I'm going to right click on our spaceship layer and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'll click selection and then click invert mask and click add. And so that's going to allow this star to basically be a cutout of our main spaceship shape here. And that allows the star shape to take on whatever color is behind it. And so I'll grab a different tool here just to get rid of that path. And then I'll go to select none. And then let me come over here to our pass dialog again and hide that uh, arrow path. And then I'll come back over here to our layers panel. And I'll grab our zoom tool, hold control and zoom out. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a circle inside of this arrow here. So I'll create a new layer and just name this small circle because we're going to have some uh, larger circles in a second. And I'll go ahead and grab my ellipse select tool and click inside the star here to draw it. But I'm going to hold the control key to draw it from the center and then hold my shift key to keep this at a fixed aspect ratio. And then I'm going to draw this so that the circle is a little bit smaller than our arrow here and release my mouse and then grab my bucket fill tool and I want this to be that same color blue so I'll go ahead and fill this in with that blue and go to select none and now we have a circle inside of there. Next I'm going to draw the larger circles that are behind our spaceship here. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'll just name this large circle and click OK and I'll keep it on the top for now but we're going to move that in a second. And I'm going to go ahead and grab our ellipse select tool here and I can click in the middle and hold shift and the control key. And that again is going to allow us to expand the circle from center and then also keep this at a fixed aspect ratio. And I want the circle to be a little bit smaller than our spaceship. And actually let me make this a little bit smaller. So I'll click on the corner here. And again, I'm holding control and shift. And then let me go ahead and click and drag this so that we can make sure this is uh, perfectly centered on the guides here. You'll see that little plus sign in the middle is snapping to where our guides intersect and that ensures this is perfectly centered here. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and fill this in with the uh, light blue color that I use. So we can come over here and uh, here's the color that I used and you can copy this HTML notation here and I'll click OK and I'll grab my bucket fill tool and go ahead and fill this in. And now what I want to do is create another circle outside of this and it's going to basically be a 25 pixel border that goes around this, but there's also going to be a little bit of space between this larger circle and the outline. So to do that, I'll go to select grow and I'm going to grow this by 50 pixels. So you could change the units here to pixels if it's not already set and click OK. And I'll create a new layer and name this circle outline and hit the enter key. And this one I filled in with a gold color, so I'll go ahead and change this to this gold color I used. And again, you can copy the HTML notation here. And I'll click OK. And I'll go ahead and fill this in. And now I want to shrink this down, so go to Select, Shrink. And I'm going to shrink this by 25 pixels here. And I'll click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the Delete key on my keyboard. And go to Select None. And now you can see we've got a larger circle and then we've got an outline going around that larger circle. But obviously these are covering up our spaceship so I want to go ahead and move both of these below the spaceship layer. And I'll move the circle outline layer below the large circle layer. And so this has created a problem because again we used a layer mask to cut out this uh, arrow shape. But we want this arrow to be white, we don't want it to be the blue behind here. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my spaceship layer, right click and go to alpha to selection. And then I'll go to select grow and I'm going to just grow this by 10 pixels this time. So I'll change that to 10 and click OK. And so now you'll see our outline has grown a little bit here and I'm going to create a new layer and I'll name this spaceship outline and I'll set the fill width to transparency again and click OK. And I'm going to move this spaceship outline below our spaceship layer, grab our bucket fill tool and I'm going to change the color here to white. And so you can do that just by dragging this to the top corner. And then go ahead and fill this in with white. And now you'll see that all the transparent portions of this logo now turn into that white color. And I'll go to select none. The next thing I want to do is create those lines that kind of emanate from this arrow here and also go over into our circle. And I'm going to do that using paths and some of the guides here. So I'm going to just grab my move tool here and I'm going to come up here and grab a guide. And I'm going to drag this to where I want the uh, first line to end at. So I'll put that about there and then I'll grab another guide 
and I'll put this where I want my second line to end, so about right there. And I'll just move this down a little bit. And then I'll actually grab one more guide and bring it to where I want these lines to start. So I'll put this about right here, just a little bit above where the circle is. And now I want to add some vertical guides because I do want the lines to uh, basically go to the same spot on both sides here. I want to keep everything symmetrical basically. So what I can do is just grab a guide and put it here and I'm just loosely placing these right now. And I'll grab a second guide and put it here. And I can grab my alignment tool and I'll keep this set relative to the image. And what I'm going to do is click on this guide here and I want to align it to the center but I want it to be offset a little bit. And I'm not sure what I want this to be offset as yet. So I'm just going to try something out here. I'll go ahead and go with 400 first and then I'll hit distribute center and uh, that's going to distribute this to the center of our image but it's going to offset it by 400 pixels and I actually need to change this to uh, minus 400 for the left side. So I'll go ahead and hit distribute. So that's actually just slightly too far so I'm just going to change this to 375 and I'll keep the negative sign there and then go ahead and hit distribute horizontal centers of targets again. So that should be pretty good. We can always adjust that later if we need to. And I'm going to do the same here. So I'll click on this guide and just get rid of the negative sign and then hit distribute horizontal centers of targets and that will uh, make sure that both of these are aligned 375 pixels from the center. I'm just going to grab my move tool real quick because I actually do want this bottom guide to be about center of this circle here. All right, so I'll go ahead and grab my pass tool and I'm going to click and create my first node on our path right in the center here on this guide. And then I'm going to come up here to the top left and click and create a node right here. And then I'm going to come all the way over to the right and click right here and then come down and hold my control key. And that's going to create a union between this path and this path, which means it's basically connecting these paths. And now we've got a triangle shape here. And so what we're doing with this is we're creating lines that go through both the spaceship here and the circle here, but we want these lines to be transparency, so it's not actually going to have a color to it. And so we're going to achieve that look through a layer mask. So I'll come back over here to the layer mask we already have on our spaceship, and I want this to be a black stroke, and that way when we paint black on our layer mask, it will create transparency. So I'll come over here and change the color of this to black. You can always just drag this to the bottom right corner as well, and I'll click OK. And then I'm going to come down here to Stroke Path, and I'll set the stroke line to solid color with anti-aliasing and then the line width I want to be 10 pixels. And I'll go ahead and hit stroke. And so now you'll see wherever our uh, path intersects our spaceship here, it created transparency and thus created lines there. The only issue is that I don't want a line going through the top here. So I can go ahead and grab my paintbrush and I can hit this button here, this icon, that'll change this to white and then flip that so that it's now my foreground color. And I'll just go ahead and paint this line out because I don't need it. And so now you'll see we have a line going through our spaceship. But we also want the line to go through our circle here. And we want it to do so at the same point. So I'll come back over here to our paths and unhide the path here. And grab my pass tool and click on this path. And then I'm going to come back over here to my layers panel. And I'm going to come over to our large circle layer. Right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2 I'll choose white full opacity. Make sure the invert mask is unchecked and then I'll click add. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch this color back to black and hit stroke path. And make sure these settings are the same and hit stroke. And so now again we've got some lines going through the circle here. And we've got a line going through the top which I'm just going to go ahead and keep that there because I thought it looked pretty cool. And now I want to create a second set of lines a little bit higher up. So what I need to do is make sure I still have my path tool selected here. And I'll change the mode of this to move. And I'm going to click and drag this path up until it basically snaps to the tip of our arrow there. And then I'll go ahead and hit stroke path again and hit stroke again. And that will draw another line through our circle. And then I want to go ahead and repeat that on our spaceship layer. So I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the layer mask here and not on the layer itself. And then go to stroke path and hit stroke again. And now we have a line going through our spaceship as well. And so now I'll come over here to our path layer and hide that path we created. And I'll grab the move tool here. And we've got a line going through the tip of the spaceship here, which we don't want. So I'll click on our spaceship layer again, switch this color to white, grab our paintbrush tool, and just go ahead and paint that line out. All right, so now what I'm going to do is add that orbiting object. 
So I'm gonna do that by clicking on our ellipse select tool and I'm gonna go ahead and create an oval shape that's about the size of our spaceship here, uh, maybe a little bit larger. So I'm gonna click and drag this and go ahead and center this here on this guide. So you'll see we have a nice oval shape here and I'm gonna create a new layer and I'll just name this orbit and click OK. And now I wanna fill this in with that gray color that I use. So I'll go ahead and select this gray here. Go ahead and copy that HTML notation if you'd like. And then I'll grab my bucket fill tool and fill this in. And this is below the small circle layer. That's why you still see that. And now I'll grab my ellipse select tool again and I'll click inside of the selection area here. And I'm gonna go ahead and offset this a little bit and then scale it down. So I'll hold my shift key and then I'll scale this down a little bit and I'll just move this around a tiny bit here and then I'll move this side in a little bit and I basically want one side to be a little thicker than the other that's going to give it a little bit of dimension and once I have this set in the right place I'll go ahead and hit delete and go to select none so now we have this orbiting object here and I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this so that it is uh, just above our larger circle layer and below the spaceship. So next we're gonna come over here to our unified transform tool because we wanna rotate this orbit shape. And we wanna make sure that the transform mode is set to layer. If it's still set to path, it's not going to rotate the layer. It's gonna to try to rotate whatever active path is on here. So I have this set to layer and now I'm going to click on our orbit layer. And I'll come up here to the top until uh, my mouse changes to the rotate icon there. And then I'll go ahead and click and drag this and rotate it around until I get it where I want it. And so I'll put it about there and click transform. And so now we have this orbit shape here. And then I'm going to move this layer below the spaceship layers and above the large circle layer. And I want it to look like this is going behind the circles here. So I'll click on our first large circle, right click and go to alpha to selection. And then I'll come up here to our orbit layer grab the eraser tool and go ahead and erase just the bottom part of the orbit here. And if you want, you can also use a layer mask here instead of the eraser. And then I also want to make this look like it's dipping behind the yellow part. So I'll come over here to our circle outline, right click and go to alpha to selection and come back over here to our orbit layer and go ahead and delete just the uh, smaller parts here at the bottom and go to select none. And now it looks like it dips behind this yellow circle, reappears where there's no circle here, and then dips behind the blue circle. All right, so just a couple things left here. I want to create a gradient background behind here, and I'm gonna use the uh, blue from the original here. So I used a radial gradient that goes from a lighter blue to a darker blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add this US Space Force text. So I'll come back over here to our composition. So the first thing I wanna do is choose my foreground and background color. So I'll click on here and grab my color picker tool and go ahead and choose this navy blue here. So go ahead and copy this HTML notation if you'd like. And then I want to use a darker blue here. So I'll grab my color picker tool again, choose this blue, but then I'm gonna add some black to it here using the RGB slider. And I'll go with that right there. And I'll grab my gradient tool here, make sure the shape here is set to radial and the uh, gradient itself is set to foreground and background RGB. And then I'm gonna come over here to our background layer and click in the center guides here or near the center guides and then just drag this out towards uh, one of the back corners here. And I actually want the colors to be reversed on this so I'll just hit this arrow here and that will reverse our colors so they go from our uh, lighter blue to our darker blue. And I actually also want this blue to be a little less dark so I'll just drag the black slider a little bit and click OK. And then I'll just grab the move tool and that will apply our gradient. And then I'll grab our text tool here and click on the composition. And again, I have the font set to Amarillo US Air Force. You can click on here and uh, click on this button here to bring up your fonts dialog. And you can search through the fonts until you find that font, assuming you downloaded it. If you downloaded the font after you opened GIMP, just go ahead and hit this refresh icon and that will refresh all your fonts. And I'll go ahead and change the color of this font to white and click OK, and then I'll just type U-S Space Force, and I've got my caps lock key on. And I'll go ahead and increase the kerning, which is going to increase the spacing between the letters. Uh, you do have to select all the text first, and go ahead and increase this. Let's go to about 20 here, 
And then I'll grab my move tool and go ahead and center this. And I actually want to decrease the kerning a little bit on here. So let me decrease this back to 15. And then center this. You can see I'm snapping that little plus sign to the center guide there. All right, so now we can go ahead and hide these guides. So I'll go to View, Show Guides, and that'll hide all of our guides so we can see our logo. All right, so there's one last detail you guys can do, uh, which is something I did on the original. And I'll hit the Z on my keyboard to grab my zoom tool. And I'll go ahead and zoom in here. And I'll just click one more time. I'll go to View, Show Guides, and click and drag a guide here. And basically what I did is I just cleaned these lines up here and actually made them more pronounced. So I'll grab my lasso tool and make sure we're on the spaceship layer mask here. And then just click and click again right here on the uh, guide there. And then just create a triangle shape. Hit enter. And then change this color here to black. And use the bucket fill tool to fill this in. And I'll do the same thing over here. Hit enter. And I'm just eyeballing this. I didn't really do this precisely. And I'll go to select none. And go ahead and grab my zoom tool. Zoom out a little bit. And uh, now those lines right there are a little bit cleaned up and they're a little bit more pronounced. All right, if you want to center this up a little bit, you can grab your crop tool and go ahead and draw on your composition here. And if you move this over a little bit, it'll snap to the center guide. And I've got my guides within my crop set to rule of thirds. You can also set this to center lines if you want. And then just drag this so that the space here is even with the space down here. And go ahead and click and that will crop your logo. All right, so there you have it. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.